In this video, we're going to look at the degrees of freedom of our components inside of an assembly. Normally, when we bring in a component, and it's not the base component, and we don't ground it at the origin, it has a lot of movement available to it. So these are called degrees of freedom. We can have three translational degrees of freedom, as well as three rotational degrees of freedom. So we can translate in the x, y, and z direction. We can rotate in the x, y, and z axis as well. What I'm going to do is just quickly bring in another component here. I'm just going to drag in another quantity of the rectangle hole 4 from this assembly degrees of freedom IAM. Let's take a look at this one. As you can see, I can move it around. Basically, it's got free movement inside this assembly environment. And we can actually turn on a visible degree of freedom reference. We can do that on our view tab at the top of the screen with this degree of freedom command right here. This basically shows us what open degrees of freedom this component has. As I start applying what's called assembly constraints, those degrees of freedom get removed. And that's kind of my job here inside the assembly. I need to start applying these geometric assembly constraints to restrict movement to make sure the components stay where I want them to be. So I'm going to turn off this degree of freedom up here. And as you notice, as I move this around, I just get basic translation going in the X, Y, and Z direction here. What if I want to have a little bit more assistance in seeing what type of movement this has available to it? You know, this is nice to have that degree of freedom and glyph show up if it's only like 10 parts. But if you get towards like 50 or 75 parts or even more, it's kind of hard to tell where all those arrows are and which components they're on. So I'm going to go back to my assemble tab. And there's a command located here in this productivity panel on this flyout. At the bottom, there is a degree of freedom analysis. I'm going to turn that on. And it basically lists the components I have inside this assembly. You can see they're kind of duplicated here. And how many translation and rotational degrees of freedom are available. Now I'm going to click on Animate Freedom in this dialog. And then click on this last component I placed. It will quickly show me how this can still move and rotate. Basically what it can do inside this environment. So I can identify what I need to do to lock it in place. I'm going to cancel that. We'll use that command again later. For now I'm going to delete this. And do a zoom all here again. As you can see, I already have a few other components inside this assembly that have already been placed. And they already have some of these geometric relationships on them. Now, as we look at this, we can see I have a rubber stopper in here. I have this little nut screw inside of this one as well. I have a little slotted short runner here, as well as three of those rectangular pieces put together. And from what it looks like, everything looks kind of constrained right now. Everything looks like it's fully constrained, right? But it's really not. And if I came in here and started pulling on something, I can see I have movement in certain directions, but not other directions. Click on this rotation one here for this rubber stopper. I can actually rotate this around. Same thing with this nut. But look at that. I can actually come up and down and rotate with that. So this one here doesn't go up and down. It just rotates. This one here rotates and goes up and down. This piece out here will slide this way as well as the slotted piece will also rotate around that. So you can see the dangers of leaving something loose or unconstrained and leaving open degrees of freedom. So to kind of analyze what we have available to us for our degrees of freedom here, I'm going to use that tool again. Okay, again, degree of freedom analysis. I'm going to click animate freedom. And we'll just kind of take a look at the rectangle three hole here, occurrence three. Take a look at occurrence two. Take a look at the nut screw. It can move up and down as well as rotate. The rubber holder can just rotate in place. This one here is actually my base component. It's grounded. So when something is grounded, it doesn't have any translation or rotational degrees of freedom. It basically gets locked in place. And there's my little slotted runner there. Now, what we're going to see in other videos in the series is basically how to put this together so we stop this movement. So I'm just going to apply one here really quick. If I go back to my degree of freedom analysis, I can see that the rectangle four hole, occurrence two, occurrence three, and the short slot runner, by applying just one geometric constraint, has fully locked this in place. So when I come in here, I can only remove this just by applying one geometric constraint in a certain way. One constraint doesn't equal one degree of freedom. It can actually equal a couple degrees of freedom. And we're going to see that in later videos in the series. So this has been a look just at degrees of freedom that we have inside of an assembly and some of the guidelines you should follow around this. The takeaways are you should make sure your assembly is constrained in a way that it's a nice static representation of your design. Even if you have movement, it's not a bad idea to create a static representation of it 
then to apply movement through controlling these degrees of freedom through the assembly constraints. And we can do that with equations, we can do that with driving values. So in the end, you don't want to leave anything too open.